Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of The Awesome with Cody. As usual, I'm your host, Cody, and we are continuing February's theme of awesome adaptations of Joe Hill. Um, we are talking about In the Tall Grass today. In the Tall Grass is a novella uh, co-written by Joe Hill and his father, Stephen King. Um, it was released in 2012. No, 13? 12. Yep, 12. Um, originally released as a two-part uh, in Esquire magazine in 2012. Uh, the June, July, and August issue. So June, July was one. August was the second. Um, and then later released as a uh, – well, that's an incorrect number. That's weird. Uh, anyways – Released in uh, an ebook and audiobook format um, later that year uh, in October of 2012, and then late last year uh, was released in th- uh, full throttle, um, a collection um, of short stories um, released by Joe Hill um, in 2019. Like I said last year, and. Uh, it had other short stories as well as this novella um, in it. But anyways, uh, so In the Tall Grass tells the story of um, brother and sister Becky and Cal who are um, traveling from uh, during spring break uh, because, well, Becky is pregnant and they're driving to San Diego uh, where she will be um, giving up her baby for adoption. Um, so anyways, the, the whole premise is they're driving, they have to make a stop, um, uh, on the way on the cross country trip, they stop at all the different, uh, tourist traps, uh, like the biggest ball of twine. Um, so after, uh, driving for about three days, they stop at a field tall grass, after they hear a little boy named Tobin calling for help. So, uh, the book and the movie differ. Um, the movie has a happy ending. Um, the book, not so much. Um, and, uh, so the, Let's see, how do I... Uh, I guess I'll spoil the book and then I'll spoil the movie. Yeah, that works. Um, so in the book, the not happy ending is everyone... No one escapes from the tall grass. Everyone dies. And at the end, a um, group of hippies in an RV show up. Um, and they hear Tobin's call for help as well. Um, and the whole group walks towards the tall grass to see if they can help. So in the tall grass, um, literally in the tall grass, the book and in the tall grass, uh, the the characters are lured in by Tobin, this little boy, and then Ross, his father, um, starts to murder everybody, um, or tries to murder everybody. He murders his wife at one point, tries to murder Becky, but... She then stabs him to death, and then she stumbles into the clearing where there's a giant rock with carvings on it of dancing men, and uh, she hears whispering. She blacks out, gives birth prematurely, um, passes out to sounds of slurping sounds, and then... When Cal, her brother, and Tobin, who ran into each other, find her passed out, um, when she wakes up, the baby's gone, and then Cal and Tobin drag the half-conscious Becky to the rock and throw her on it. End of that story jumps out to, um, We don't know how long, but an unspecified amount of time has passed. An RV full of hippies pulls into the parking lot across the street to have a barbecue and smoke marijuana. They then hear Tobin's call for help, and the whole group walks into the tall grass to help. That's how that ends. The movie 
Hollywood and their infinite wisdom making things happy uh, takes it a little bit further. They have added in a lot of stuff. Um, the fact that there's multiple times people are dying in the grass, they're alive and dead multiple times. Ross is um, essentially being controlled by the rock to have more and more of them touch the rock and embrace the rock, then infecting them with whatever he, he mind control or whatever it is that he has. And um, if they don't, he's going to forcibly do it, make them do it, or he's going to kill them over and over again until they, you know, they listen to him. Um, so when they, uh, in the story, in the movie, um, Tobin is, I don't know technically if he was ever, he, if he ever touched the rock at one point I thought he had, but like it was really bizarre. Um, but in the boot, in the movie you get introduced to Travis who is the father of Becky's child who abandoned her. They you know, broke up when, uh, uh, when he found out they were, she was pregnant. He's in the movie. He shows up a good chunk into it and is a main character in it, which was weird to me. Um, but it, like I said, actually, the movie was actually pretty cool in the fact that it kind of had an ending of sorts, um, but not as dystopian, I guess you could say, as uh, forlorn or whatever, uh, as the book, um, because eventually Travis kills Ross after Ross had killed Cal several times over, um, which is a pretty cool scene. Um, But uh, he then after being stabbed in the gut by a broken off what looked to be the the large bone from your leg, the part that has the, 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 the ball joint on it. I don't know what the bone, that bone's called. I can probably look it up. I'm not going to. But he uh, Ross had picked that up and had stabbed him with it, and then they got in a scuffle, and uh, Becky clobbered him over the head when he fell down. Ross attacked him choked him out with some of the tall grass, killed him, and then goes over and touches the rock. You see this transformation happen where his vision changes, and you see inside where grass is growing inside of him, and the rock starts to beat like a heart. And then he says, he turns it to to, um, Tobin and says, follow me, grabs him by his hand, gets him, brings him out. You're like, oh, he's going to let him, he's going to get him out of the tall grass. And he's like, give this to Becky, make sure she doesn't go in the grass. And Tobin's like, what's happening? And then all of a sudden he pushes him and he ends up inside of a room, which you realize is the locked uh, um, room, which I can't remember what it's called in the back of a church. So Tobin unlocks the, the door, goes out. He hears the car come up. When he opens the door of the church, he sees that it's Cal and Becky's car and they'd already stopped. And so he runs over there and tells them, don't go in the tall grass and he shows her what Travis gave her, gave him to give to her, and it's uh, a keepsake bottle opener thing that she had earlier that she gave to Travis, um, which I'm guessing has some significance at one point, like it's a thing they know of or whatever. And then when he hands it to her, she has her original one all shiny and nice, and this one's all tattered and, and beat up, and she's like, Cal, don't go in there, come back here, something's wrong. And they take Tobin into the car and they drive away, And then the camera zooms back into the grass and you see uh, Travis who's like happy that they got away and then he falls over and you can see the gaping bloody wound and he seemingly dies there in the grass saving Becky, Cal who's a piece of shit and the little boy. Boom, there you go. So that's a spoiler for the book and the movie. Um, The book or the movie got the premise of the book actually very well done. They didn't really skimp on a whole lot. The fact, even the fact that like, there's one thing I didn't talk about in the book that I'm pretty sure is in the book. If I don't remember it as well, but the slurping sounds, um, 
I don't remember. I'm trying to remember if in the book it doesn't. I was going to look it up and I forgot to do it before I started recording. But basically, Ross feeds Becky's baby to her and tells her it's grass that's going to help her be better. But it ends up just being the baby, which is gnarly. Um, I believe that's in the book as well. Um, And that's why the baby's nowhere to be seen and the slurping sounds were... Um, her, I guess, or I don't know. I'm not too sure. I remember, uh, I remember reading something about it, but I can't remember what it was now. Um, and the book is like right near me so I can look it up. I'm not gonna, um, but yeah, the premise, basically the grass draws you in falsely. You get lost because every time you, as you go and you walk, the, the grass keeps you inside, keeps you trapped, and you can never really see where you're going. And you kind of move around without moving around, um, which is pretty cool. It has really good sound effects in the movie because they move the voices off camera, left and right, outside the the image. And it's pretty, uh, like, um, meant to di- be disorient- disorienting like it is in the book, where... You're standing still. The other person says they're standing still, but every time they talk to you, they sound like they're coming from a different direction, and they do a really good job of that in the in the movie uh, with the audio. It's pretty cool. If you have surround sound, if you have stereo TV, it's just going to sound left or right. So, you know, that's cool. Um, but like I said, the premise of the, the... The movie gets the premise of the book pretty spot on. Obviously, they change details, add in extra characters. Um that aren't even in really in the book. Um, and then kind of make a Travis, a reluctant hero. Um, the difference though, is that the thing is it kind of, it has this time travel effect because he's in the grass months have passed since they, since they were supposed to be in San Diego. They think they've only been gone for three days. Travis tells them they've been gone for two months and so him letting her them go before they even got in the grass or getting them to not go in the grass resets that two months, which means he would have never had. He would have never gone looking for them because they wouldn't have been missing for two months. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like the reason he came after them is because he was worried because he heard that his her parents, their parents, the Cal and Becky's parents were worried that they don't know what happened to him because they've been they've been missing and so they reach out to Travis, or Travis reached out to them, I couldn't remember what it was, and they tell him, so he goes searching on the same path they're going on, sees their vehicle in the in the uh, parking lot of the church, and then he goes in the grass looking for him because he saves them from going in the grass, and essentially, he never, he's probably alive again too because he never had, he never would have left to follow them um, because they weren't, weren't missing for two months. You know what I mean? And uh, a lot of cool things um, and a lot of visuals that give you certain clues to what's going on um, because of the, the state of things. Um, and I'll give you these little points so you pay attention if you watch the movie um, or if you've seen the movie, you can, you can think back on it or if you watch it again or whatever. When... Cal and Becky first show up. She's reading a book. She gets car sick, mainly because he's eating a hamburger and, you know, women get, I guess, I don't know, you know, but from what I've always heard and whatever, pregnant women will get sick a lot of times from smells and scents and things like that. And so she sees him chowing down this hamburger and this is, throw, and tells him to stop. She throws up outside the car, dropping her book. Well, when Travis comes to to see them, you know something's going on because he finds the book that looked fine now it's weather beaten, sun bleached, uh, pages are all bent and, and, and frayed next to what would have been a, a, a pile of vomit, a puddle of vomit, but it's been dried up. And Cal had moved the car into the parking lot to get out of the road um, while they went to look for Tobin in the grass. But when Travis spots it, it's parked next to a van and all these other cars by this empty church and it's covered in dust. Like it's been sitting there for a while and you kind of get this idea of, Oh shit, time has traveled. And he tells her, you know, it's been, 
or time has passed, it's been two months, and then you realize what you would have seen was the fact the book was sitting in the road on the side of the road for two months in the elements, and their car has been sitting in the parking lot next to a van that you see at one point that Ross, Natalie, and Tobin show up in with Freddy, their dog, before they get pulled into the grass. And the voice they hear to pull them into the grass is actually Travis calling to Tobin because Tobin contacted him in the grass. It's this weird loop of crazy, but it's cool little details you can, you can see when you're watching it. So it's like this ever like part of them are still trapped in the grass, but because he kind of broke the cycle, I guess because that Tobin that escaped with Becky and Cal that never went into the grass he was the one that was in the grass, so A, he's probably going to have some pretty traumatic uh, um, dreams here in the next future, so a lot of therapy needed, but um, he essentially escaped the grass, kind of stopping the cycle, so it's kind of interesting to see how they're going to do it, but whatever. Um, but yeah. Oh, talk about the movie a little bit of who's in it. I forgot that part. Um, and it's all grass released in uh, 2019, October 4th, 2019 on Netflix. The Netflix original movie. Watch it on there. Um, it's directed by a gentleman named Vincenzo. I think it's Vincenzo. I'm not too sure. Um, Natalie. Um, Vincenzo has done a lot of things, a lot of writing, a lot of producing, storyboarding. Directing wise, he did. Um, a bunch of things for Netflix so far. Uh, he did one episode of Luke Cage. He did uh, an episode of Lost in Space. He did, um, obviously, Tall Grass. In the Tall Grass, he did two episodes of Lock and Key. He's done a lot of TV shows. Hemlock Grove, which I guess that's also a Netflix one, right? I believe so. Um, he did American Gods for on Stars. He did The Strain on FX. Uh, Wayward Pines on Fox. Uh, Hannibal for NBC. Um, and these are all directing stuff. Uh, so he's done a lot of that stuff. Um, a lot of horror based stuff and genre kind of stuff. Orphan Black, uh, another one, which I believe is technically sci fi. Also BBC, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, he's done a lot of stuff. Uh, and uh, he wrote or adapted this to the screen and directed it, which is pretty cool. Um, starring. In the movie, uh, you only have literally seven people. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, eight people. I forgot the lady at the gas station. Um, you have Harrison Gilbertson as Travis. Um, Laisla de Oliveria as Becky. I'm pretty sure I butchered that name. Avery uh, Witted as Cal, her brother. Will... Bowie Jr. Bowie Jr. I'm not too sure how to say that last name. He plays Tobin. Rachel Wilson plays Natalie. Um, Patrick Wilson plays Ross. Uh, Tiffany Helm plays gas station attendant, and William Freighter plays Grassman. Um, so, who are these people? So, Harrison Gilbertson, who plays Travis, has done a lot of things. Um, nothing that would denote you being, oh, that guy. Um, but uh, he's done, movie-wise, biggest thing I see on there is, is Upgrade. I don't remember him from that, but he's in it, apparently. He's not the main guy. I know that much. Um, but he's really good in this. Um, then you have, I can't, I don't know if I'm saying her name right now, but uh, it's Laisala de Oliveria. Um, I I watched this when this first came out. I rewatched it today, right before I recorded did not realize who she was until I rewatched it this time. And I was going to talk about more of it. I'll talk about it more next week when I talk about Lock and Key because she's in Lock and Key. She plays Dodge slash Echo. And she's also in a movie I just watched called Code 8, um, which I'm planning on doing uh, or talking about another time uh, with a bunch of other uh, like independent sci-fi movies that I enjoyed. Um but uh yeah so she's in both of those um both Netflix uh projects Lock and Key and 
in the tall grass. <clears throat> but I couldn't remember what I had seen her from. Um, but then I realized she was in the short-lived, actually not a bad show, The Gifted on Fox. Which is based on the X-Men franchise. Um, but that's where I knew her from. I couldn't figure out where I knew her from. So I thought it was that. Then I rewatched uh, In the Tall Grass and I was like, holy shit, she's Becky. That's why I know who she is. Um, so she's pretty awesome. And I think she's going to be a big, big star. Um, and stuff. <coughs> so um, playing Cal, you have Avery Witted. I again, a, a gentleman I didn't know who he was. And apparently, he's very new at acting. He only has three credits on his uh, his bill, and two of them are out, and one of them's not. Um, he has something in 2017 where he played Henry Crow in The Vanishing of Sydney Hall, which I guess is a horror movie of some sort. Um, maybe, maybe not. I'm not too sure. Sounds like it could be. Uh, in the Tall Grass, plays Cal, and then he plays um, Vincent DeMarco in. New York Christmas Wedding, whatever the fuck that is. Um, anyways, um, I didn't like him in this, but I think I because of his character's a dick in it, so maybe that's why I didn't like it. Playing um, little Tobin is uh, Will. I want to say it's Bowie Junior. B U I E. I'm not too sure how to say it. Um, also, very short, much longer list of acting credits than uh, than the last guy. Uh, but, um, of things you might know, which I don't think you do, uh, he played a character named Boy, uh, in Gifted, which is a movie with Chris Evans and that little girl from, uh, Fuller House, I can't think of her name right now, um, Modern Family played Older Son, one episode, I guess, and then, uh, something called Bunked which is a TV series that's still going. He played in a handful of episodes, uh, 41 episodes, I guess, which might be him as a regular. I'm not too sure what it is. He plays Finn Sawyer. Wait, Finn Sawyer? That's weird. I don't know what Bunked is. Oh, it's that Disney show about the summer camp that I've never actually watched. I've seen commercials for. Okay, he's in that, apparently. There you go. He's really good in this. He's creepy as shit, too. Um, then you have uh, Rachel Wilson. Um, he's been in a lot of fucking movies and TV shows that I'm not going to go over. Um, most recently for movies. Um, well, In the Tall Grass. And then a bunch of TV shows that are more in the last few years. Um, nothing she's been... Like, big in. Uh, it's all ones or twos episodes, but yeah, it's Rachel Wilson. And then, of course, my man, Patrick Wilson, who uh, I dig a lot. Um, most notably for me, I always go back to the fact he played Night Owl 2 in the Watchmen movie, the Zack Snyder Watchmen movie. He was also played um, um, Orem or Ocean Master in the Aquaman movie slash uh, something else. Is he, no, he's only going to show up in that. I think it's the only the only thing he showed up as Orm is in is in uh, Aquaman. Apparently, he voiced the president of the United States in Batman v Superman: Dawn of Justice. Okay, did not know that. Um, but he was in the first season of Fargo on FX. He's in the Insidious movies. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's. Uh, Patrick Wilson, I like that dude a lot uh, in the stuff he does. Um, yeah, that's it for uh, this week's episode of The Awesome with Cody, where I've been talking about In the Tall Grass, the the novella, as well as the TV movie or Netflix movie or whatever I call it. Um, so tune in next week when we wrap up February's theme, um, where we'll be talking about Lock and Key, um, both the comic and the first season of the television program on Netflix. Um, so tune in next week, uh, same talk time, same talk channel. I don't know. Um, anyways, that's it for this week's episode. As I usually say at the end of this, um, let's be awesome. <laughs>